This week's weekly roundup, we have GPS and GSM modules, battery management, SBCs, the usual robots, and a desktop laser cutting machine. Kickstarter is a bit more lively this week. In my previous roundups, you might have seen two similar stepper motor controllers to this one. The H drive has all the same features as the others. However, it is accessible via Ethernet. You can control it via web interface, or they have example code in MATLAB and C, giving you precise positioning and kinematic controls over speed and torque. The Badger board is a small board containing an Atmega 32U4, LoRa module, LiPo battery management, and temperature and humidity sensors. Novocell DLS is a desktop laser cutting and engraving machine, able to cut and engrave pretty much anything you want. It contains a 50 watt water cooled CO2 laser that you can upgrade to 70 watts, able to cut up to 12.7mm thick material. Nice! If you've ever been stuck trying to access an RS-232 device, then this is a handy breakout for your breadboard toolbox. It's simply a TTL to RS-232 logic level converter, but in a handy breadboard format. The U-Tracker is a nice ultra low power board with onboard GSM 900 and GSM 1800 GPS and GSM modules, accelerometer, micro SD, red switch and a Pico Power Atmel chip able to drop down to 9.5 microamps, can be powered from USB, QI or solar cell. The Dashbot is a cool idea. It essentially places voice recognition in your vehicle and from then on who knows what you will do with it contains a microphone array and built-in noise cancelling so it'll pick up the most nervous speaker. There's also an expansion pack with OBD port to access all your vehicle's internals. All powered by the Chip Pro. What are you waiting for? If you've ever had moisture issues with your 3D prints, then this Kickstarter is a storage case for your filaments that'll both protect and feed filament out of it. AE Modular is a modular analogue synthesizer. It gives you a control over all aspects of the synth with attack, delays, filters, etc. A nice little kit if you want to play around with analog sounds. Hey, another 3D printer. No wait, this one is different. This one is a UV based printer, which claims high accuracy and able to print even the most complicated structures. The concept is simple. A UV bulb will shine through an LCD screen and set the resin material whilst the object is moved up layer by layer. They claim 40 micron resolution, a great concept. No wonder why they are almost 500% funded. So you have all these old light switches and you want to be able to control it from the internet? The SwitchBot contains an armature that is capable of controlling most mechanical switches and buttons. Runs off a lithium battery for up to two years worth of button mashing over Bluetooth and comes with an open API. What a cool idea. Why hasn't anyone come up with this before? And then we have on Indiegogo. You guessed it, robots that inspire you to do push-ups the wrong way? Or just sit there looking a little lonely. Poor guy. I feel sorry for him being left alone like that. And a smart toaster. Uh, okay, moving on. On Crowd Supply, there's a pre-launch of an Arduino Zero compatible dual motor driver. And one that I missed earlier was a small 5 or 3.3 volt output buck converter designed to attach directly to a 9 volt battery capable of pushing 500 milliamps out. This is great if you want an easy and quick portable solution for your project. This is a great e-paper shield kit that can be soldered directly to any Teensy. Controls a 208 by 112 pixel display via SPI. This one I'll support as I have a couple of projects in mind, so stay tuned for a review and tutorial on this one. Oh man, this is hot in here. Can we turn the lights off? Speaking of e-paper, once it's back in stock, Adafruit will have a Pi Zero e-paper display at 128 by 96 pixels, which of course works on any Pi and a breakout board for Platinum RTDs. These are more stable and precise temperature sensors, but are also particularly sensitive. Measuring only 100 ohms at 0 Celsius means they need a fairly stable amplifier. I know at least one of my patrons will be interested in this one. The AI7688H from Seed is an open WRT based SOC comparable to the ESP8266 in almost every way, except with better power management and is programmable via Python, Node.js, or C. As usual, Tindy has a mishmash of new stuff. So you have a Teensy 3.5 or 3.6. Chuck one of these CAN bus adapters on so it can speak to your vehicle's CAN bus. And while you're at it, get one of these Teensy GPS modules. Both of them together will allow you to create a nice vehicle tracking system. 
If you are in need of a multi-cell battery management board, then this one will manage up to five lithium ion cells. It will balance cells and protect against all the usual issues you will see. Great for small electric vehicles. This little breakout board contains the LTC2991 chip, which allows you to monitor voltage and current on eight inputs. The 14-bit ADC will give you around 3 mV accuracy on a 5V input. It's a tiny chip, so not designed for high currents. In need of a JTAG or SWD module? This one is compatible with most IDEs such as Eclipse, Open OCD, and Crossworks, and even appears as a USB flash drive on your PC, so you can do simple things like drag and drop reflashing of your device. Apple Brother on Tindy have an LTC4054 based battery management board designed to attach to their ESP EA boards. You will have heard about Particle. Well now the Particle guys have teamed up with a Raspberry Pi Foundation. You can now get a Particle Pi starter kit that contains a Pi 3 and a bunch of sensors to help you get started coding up and using Particle Cloud. Genia Tech have always been known for their set-top boxes, but now they're entering into the SPC wars. It's a Linaro 9.6 board clone based on the Snapdragon 410 with a standard 60-pin Linaro expansion headers. So far, I haven't seen anyone selling it yet. On the cheap side of town, we have... The new Banana Pi M2 Ultra is here and available on AliExpress, although I haven't seen it available elsewhere yet. This new SBC has extra features such as the all-winner R40, up to 64GB eMMC, 2GB DDR3 RAM and Bluetooth 4.0 and Wi-Fi. Of course, contains all the usual HDMI, SATA and other ports of the previous M2. Or you can pick up the Banana Pi M64 from AliExpress which was their first 64-bit SBC running the quad-core Cortex-A64. And this is a DIY wireless charging module from Banggood, claiming to be QI compatible. An AI Thinker A7-based module with onboard GPS, GSM, capable of voice calls and SMS. Note that GSM will be phased out in most countries soon, but a cheap module still if you want just the GPS. Or you can pick up a cheap GPS module that also supports GLONASS and BDU, can provide location data at 10 Hz sample rates and spits that out at all the supported board rates. If you want to check up on any of these products, then links are in the description below and also on my website. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit like, and if you follow or subscribe to me, you'll be notified when I publish my weekly videos. On Patreon, I'll soon be hitting the point where I offer my patrons the chance to vote on upcoming videos. So supporting me there allows me to produce videos like this, and also helps me help you. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.